I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. Let me share something with you, and I want you to listen to this very carefully. I want to share something with you perhaps that you've never thought about before. I've had the opportunity to observe and preach in a church for 43 years. I've been around a little while. And I've had the opportunity to go to seminary. I've had the opportunity to go to prison, to work on a chain gang. I've had the opportunity to go down to the White House and meet with President, uh, if you will, uh, Carter. I've had the opportunity to, uh, to travel the world. Um, so I, my point of view is not narrow. It's not ghetto. It's not parochial. It's global and university. But more importantly, I've had the opportunity to meet with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I met with the devil also, not on the good terms, but that's where I've been. Now, you don't have to believe any of that, the Jesus Christ thing and the devil thing. You don't have to believe that, but I'm teaching you listening. I suppose you come to listen to me on a daily basis because you do believe, but you pick and choose things that you say, well, I just don't. But you know, I've had the opportunity. So I'm, I'm a universal understanding person. I know the laws of the Old Testament. I know the blood of Jesus in the New Testament. I know the Bible from kiva to kiva, as they say, meaning cover to cover. But let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. I started this teaching a few days ago. If you just look at the balance sheet now of righteousness as in terms of the Islamic faith and righteousness in terms of the Christendom, I don't want to call them Christians, but the churchianity, religiosity faith, you know, the Southern Baptist, the Apostolic, the Black Baptist, the whatever, the Church of England, the Church of God in Christ. If you look at the level of righteousness, if you put them all collectively together, which is called Christianity, and then look at the level of righteousness, which is required by Almighty God in the Islamic faith, the Islamics, the Muslims win hands down. Hold on, there's more. I've stated, and I, I truly believe this, I believe there'll be more Christians, more evangelicals, more, if you will, black Baptists, National Baptists, American Baptists, Church of England, Catholic, Presbyterian. I believe there'll be more people who have worn those labels but never worn the word or the spirit or the anointing of Almighty God, whose name is Jesus. I believe that there'll be more those people who've worn the Christian label who will be in hell and be ultimately transferred to the lake of fire eternally than they will be Muslims. I believe that. Now, I, I, I don't know how many Muslims there are on planet Earth. I know there are over a billion of them, um, and there are over a billion Christians. But the Muslims, in terms of righteousness, wins hands down. Now, but here's the problem with the Muslims. They have a false deity. They have a, a name of a deity that is not deity. He is not God. Allah is not God. Allah is a non-existent. He does not exist. The Islamic faith is built primarily upon uh, the teachings of, of Moses, the laws of Moses. They follow most of those laws, and that's where they get their principle from. Now, listen to me very carefully. Though Allah does not exist as a false god, there's no doubt. Allah is not God. Allah is not God. Muslims deny that Jesus is the Son of God. That's, I understand that. But that can be dealt with. That can be dealt with. The, um, what, we, what I do want to say to you is that so-called Christians, and, I, and I've been around the church for 43 years. I, I'm, I can tell you, I have, I've, never, I've never seen such stubborn people, um, even though they go to church, and they're very regular about their attendance. They don't miss church, but talking about stubborn with respect to the, script, the scriptures, the word, the law of God. They, they just don't want to hear it. You can't, I'm going to tell you something, to get, a, to get one of these Sunday Christians to convert to Sabbath Christian, which is, you, you, you can't, anybody who knows the Sabbath and the honor of it, I don't have to explain to you. But to get one of these, these evangelists to, to convert to Sabbath day is beyond a miracle. They're just stubborn. And it isn't stubborn just for the sake of stubbornness. They're ignorant. They're not saved. They're, they're, they're not washed in the blood. They're not believers of the word of God. They're, they're not. They're just participants in an organization that gives them an outlet of things that perhaps, oh, maybe it's probably a part of their family tradition. 
But at the very least, though, the Muslims do not. And by the way, Allah is not God. Don't you get me? Don't you go off and tell somebody that that Allah is a God, it's a false God. It doesn't even he doesn't even exist no more than the Chemosh did or Ashtaroth or Baal. It don't exist. Allah doesn't exist. No, he doesn't. But the Muslims itself, they are the seed of Abraham. Now you have to follow me very closely here. Muslims are the, the seed of Abraham and of my grand aunt, if you will, Hagar, who was an Egyptian, a daughter of the Hamites, a daughter of Pharaoh, a daughter of the of the Hamite people. Hagar it was the it was the mother of Ishmael, and Abraham was his father. So Muslims are born of the seed of Abraham, the father of the faithful. Now, they got their God identity all mixed up, uh, and that's wrong. But beyond that, once you clear that out the way, and then, of course, you clear the fact that they deny that Jesus is the son of God. But listen, my friend, Jews, Shemites, also deny that Jesus is the son of God. Jews, so when you look at Jews, if you give Jews credibility, the Christians and many of the evangelicals and Southern Baptists say, let's support the Jews. If you, but the Jews deny the son of Jesus as the son of God, do they not? So on the level of denying the son of God, the Muslims and the Jews are at the same level. They reach the same number. Uh, but you give Jews credibility, then you're going to have to give the Muslim credibility. And by the way, let me just say this, and you don't have to believe this either. You can reject all of this. It's up to you. <laughs> I'm going to do this, teach this lesson, and then I'm going to have myself a great big meal and then, and then get some rest. But Atla, remember what I told you when I first heard the word Atla? I didn't like it because it sounded like the Muslim deity Allah. And I, I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to announce it. But Almighty God walked me through the Bible and showed me how nearly every name of power in the Bible ends in A-H or L-A-H. And so once I saw that, Jeremiah, Deborah, uh, the uh, Isaiah, hallelujah, Jehovah, uh, Mariah, Elijah. Once I saw all of that, I said, well, OK, I'm, I'll accept Atla. But let me share this with you as well. Um, the kingdom of God is just the opposite of the kingdom of this world. And Almighty God has given me the word Atla because every time a Muslim walks by our church and see the word Atla, World Missionary Church, he thinks about Allah. He does. And Muslims are going to come to this church. And not just that, but they're going to come to a church of righteousness because that's what they hear me preach. 